Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Games and Things. Uh, from big items like pool tables, classic stand-up arcade games, the stuff that I used to play when I was a kid, home theater seating, to smaller stuff. I mean, they, they got dart boards, they got billiards accessories, uh, gift cards. If you don't know what to get somebody, but you want to get them a, 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 a gift, Get them a gift card for games and things. OurGameRoom.com is where you can learn more about them, but you're going to have more fun uh, visiting their showroom. Uh, life should be fun. That's their motto. And if you go to their showroom, you'll find that it is. Games and things out in West Knoxville off the Lovell Road exit right at Kingston Pike. Check them out this week. Scott and Lisa Mellon have a great, great business, and they have for more than 40 years. All right. There was a story in the Knoxville News Sentinel this week that basically asked what's wrong with Tennessee's in-state recruiting. And like I say, I was a little surprised by it because I... I think we all know what's wrong with Tennessee's in-state recruiting. It's a great year in-state in terms of talent. Uh, your program's at its all-time low, in my opinion. You've never been lower, especially when you consider NCAA clouds hanging overhead. And you had to hire a coach who has no ties to the area whatsoever. Uh, so I, the what's wrong, I thought this is exactly where I expected them to be. That said, doesn't mean it's not fair. So I ask you, is it fair to start saying where's Hypo on this recruiting thing? You've been there two whole months. You're making four million. <laughs> <laughs> you cover recruiting, uh, you know, and I'm, there's another way of looking at it. Had they hired another coach, would another coach be having more success? Is it fair to be starting to wonder and worry about Josh Hypo recruiting in state? Well, I think it's fair in that it comes with the job. <laughs> but I also think it's extremely easy to answer the question. And that yeah. is the, the state of the program, the NCAA issues, and the lack of connection. This is not a, a staff overall that's known as a big-time recruiting staff. And the top talent has great options. Um, and no Tennessee fan wants to hear Ty Simpson say, well, I'm just going to go to Alabama, where quarterbacks win championships go to the NFL. But it's what he decided to this point. Jordan James, the highly touted running back, number three player in the state. George is a pretty good option to him. What, why would Tennessee be that attractive? Walter Nolan, one of the top players in the country uh, on the defensive line, right now doesn't look like he's going to give much consideration to Tennessee. There are a few that are. The, the Twins, um, uh, the Wake Twins, I think that they have a, there's a really good chance Tennessee lands those guys. So they'll get some guys here, and things can change. Last year we saw what's going on in March, April, May does not tell you exactly what's going to happen. But right now, two months in, with nothing on the field and all these off-field questions, it's very easy to understand why these recruits with options to go literally anywhere are looking elsewhere. Okay, is it fair to start worrying about, does this, I guess another way to look at it would be, does this tell you more about Heupel and his staff's lack of recruiting acumen, or does it tell you more about what he inherited and what he's trying to sell right now? It's fair or to worry, it's not fair to blame the staff. That's the way I would look That's at good. it. That's uh, good. Because, uh, and here's the thing too, so what if Pruitt were still here? Would, would his relationships that he's developed allow him to recruit a lot better, or would the NCAA cloud uh, negate that? <clears throat> I don't know. Here's the other thing, too. Allegedly, Tennessee was paying players, right? Well, take that uh, source away <laughs> from your ability to recruit. So no more McDonald's bags. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's right, McDonald's. So I, I do think it, it, it worries him, yes. Uh, and as Josh just pointed out, I remember uh, Tennessee had this incredible streak of all these commits, and then when it came to signing day, they didn't quite get all the players that they had hoped to get. This is a long time from now to December. Tennessee may flip some people. They may end up having an offense that averages 40 points a game and getting some people to come aboard. But I, I don't – to worry now, yeah, but to blame the staff at this point. No. And you've had challenges in the mid-state area for a long time, right? And then Memphis wasn't really – a lot of times that wasn't really even considered part of Tennessee as far as, as the recruiting for, for a lot of times. You change coaches, John, you kind of go to the back of the line. A lot of these other schools have developed relationships. They can call, they can text, they can do what they need to get in touch with the recruit. And I still go back, I'm sitting here thinking about the times we see parents in Tennessee gear and the kids wearing a Florida something or a kids wearing yeah. an Alabama something. They've grown up watching these other programs have success. And the last 10 years or so, other than the Josh Dobbs kind of era, it's been a struggle. And, and Tennessee's not up there the way it was before. And in terms of the mid-state, you couldn't have picked a worse time for your program to go through a down cycle. Mm -hmm, right. Because now the middle, middle of the state is booming better yeah. than it has in years and years and years as Nashville is exploding in size. And you're not getting in. You know, if that had happened in yeah. the 90s, you know how you'd been set up moving forward, you would think, on paper, 
you know, in theory, you'd have been very good chance. Yeah, yeah. You'd, have, you'd have felt really good about your recruiting moving forward because now we got some in-state guys. We're not having to just live in South Carolina and Georgia. Tennessee also took advantage uh, in the 90s, though, of Georgia, South Carolina exactly. being down, and Alabama was down. Right, so it's flipped. Yeah, it's flipped now. So no part is on probation. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, and yeah. now this is another question. If I think you, you put this in a good way, and that is it's fair to worry about how good they're going to be. It's not yet fair to blame. Uh, give it a month. But um, <laughs> when you look at uh, what other coaches could do here, all right, Kiffin. Kiffin is known. Kiffin has ties in the South. Maybe Kiffin is doing better in state than Hypel. Tony Elliott, who they went after. I don't know. In theory, right. I, he's never been a head coach before. Yeah, been down that road. Would that have helped? I, I don't know. I, the one positive I think for Tennessee, and at least on the offensive side, is Josh Heupel has proven with this system. And you go back and look at Baylor with that system. Didn't need top ten recruiting classes. Mm -hmm. You you put up numbers and get to a certain level with players. And if you've got a special quarterback, you can get way up there and wins. So I think on the offensive side. As much as you fret over not getting the best in-state guy, you may not need them. Right. Which I know sounds it runs counter to what Pruitt did. If you if you believe you're gonna the only way we win is we go out and out recruit Alabama, then you're in trouble. I don't think you're gonna out recruit Alabama regardless who your coach is. I right think now. you're you're really gonna have to bring the excitement back to Tennessee football, and that's to me that starts with a total buy-in by the players on the team now, because to me those are your best recruiters especially with this staff. If this staff is not up there top notch, when somebody comes for a visit, your best recruiters are players that are saying, we're having fun, we're going to win some ball games, you need to be part and of And here's this. your McDonald's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and John, I think uh, on offense, you don't have to get all the five, five and four star, but defensively, I think yeah. you do. Yep. And you need some linemen, I mean, both sides. Well, it'll be interesting. Again, he did wonders at Missouri with their offense and uh, as much as twos and three stars. Mm -hmm. So, if if he can do that at Tennessee with the offense, again, I, you know, I still think your goal right now, and nobody wants to hear this, but your goal is eight wins, and I mean that for the next three or four years. If he can get you to consistently at eight wins, then get back to me and talk to me about finding somebody who can go win a championship. But you are so far out of that ballpark right now, I think it's silly to even focus on that. If you're, you're right. hoping that Jalen Hyatt takes a jump, Ramel yeah. Keaton takes a jump, two or three of those guys that were highly talented, these were well thought of prospects, and then you go on recruiting trail and say, hey, look at the 2020 look. numbers. Yeah. They weren't any good. Look at what they did when we arrived. You're next. That's what you try to sell, yeah. but yeah. you haven't played games yet, so that's going to be Yeah, defensively, as you say, mm -hmm. you're going to have to recruit players. So yeah. you're going to need somebody that can recruit uh, eventually, at least on defense. But early on, you may not be hampered as much. And, and then the other thing we're talking about with how good of recruiters are, that we don't know what the scholarship limitations are going to be. And that could be, could be anywhere from not so bad to horrific. And here's the thing, too. If you're winning eight games, then you have a better chance to beat Florida and Georgia. In fact, Butch Jones had an eight-win season where he did beat Florida and Georgia. So if you're getting to that level, at least that gives you a better chance to beat those teams as opposed to being a three and seven team. Yeah. All right. Uh, when we come back, let's talk about the movement on the basketball team. There's a lot of it on the court, off the court. We'll talk about the player side of it next as Rick Barnes lands a uh, highly sought-after transfer. As yesterday, we'll talk about it next on the Sports World.